world that he thought he would have never stepped into. Am I talking to anybody in this place? He was getting ready to commit a sin that he swore to God he would never commit. And he swore it. I'll die for you. Sometimes we can have all the great intentions of the world. We can love God with all of our hearts. And when we drop our guard for just a moment sometimes, we take our eyes off of Jesus. Sometimes we just do stupid stuff. And it's those stupid things that we do that sometimes keep us back from doing God's best. Does anybody know what I'm talking about in the room today? I'm here. I've got great news for you. Jesus wasn't just talking to Pete. He was talking to you. Not if you're going to screw up. Not if you're going to do stupid things. Not if you're going to go out there and do something you never thought. Come on now, Peter never thought the world that this would ever happen to him. But he still did it. Isn't it good to know that Jesus is already praying for you? Isn't it good to know that Jesus knew you were going to make that poor decision, and but he has not given up on your life? Isn't it good to know that Jesus knew Peter was going to deny him? Not once, not twice, but three times. He was going to turn on him three times. The power, the, come on now. One of the most powerful verses in that whole aspect is found in Luke chapter 22. I love this portion because this is what happened. You ready? The moment that Peter denied him the last time, it says this, but Peter Peter said, man, I do not know what you're saying. Immediately. Everybody shout immediately. Immediately. While Peter was still talking, a rooster crowed. Oh, here it is. Next verse. And the Lord turned and looked. Oh, man. Who knew him? Nobody knew him. They, aren't you him? Aren't you with him in the, weren't you with him in the garden? No. The cock crows, but somebody knew him. Oh, come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Speak it loud. Speak it clear this morning. When Jesus turned and looked at Peter, he did not say, I told you so. He was not saying, you're a loser. He looked him in the eyes. He looked at Peter. with the eyes of saying, don't give up, son. Don't walk away, son. I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm praying for you. Don't walk away. Come on, don't you give up. Come on, Peter, you heard me say it before you ever did it. Come on, when, when, when you come to yourself, when you, when you get up. Come on, Peter, that means you're going to fall. I knew, Peter, you were going to make poor decisions. I knew, Peter, you were going to make a bad decision. I knew, Peter, you were going to deny me. I knew, Peter, you were going to walk away. But when you get up, make sure, make sure you encourage the brethren. You want to know what failure is? Failure is not falling. Failure is not getting up. So many of us in this room, the moment you start excelling in your ministry, the moment God starts using you in your life, the moment your marriage starts flourishing and growing, the moment that your finances start to increase and your tithing is there and everything has happened, man, you can't expect the devil not to hit you right where it hurts. You can't expect that. And then we have a decision. I want you to know Jesus is praying for you. And even if you make a poor decision, even if you make a bad choice, even if you sit back and rebel against God, I'm here to tell you, when you get up, Make sure you encourage somebody. 
Because I don't care who you are in this room. I don't care how many years you've been serving Jesus in this room. I don't care how many hours a day you pray in this room. Every single one of us is going to be tempted. Every single one of us is going to be tried. Every single one of us is going to come to a decision where we have to choose, and especially in the hard times. Peter, he, he never thought he would have done it. You've watched the preachers on television. You've heard the preachers. Not one of us in this room is exempt. Not one of us in this room is too good. Listen, Peter walked with Jesus. Even though he fell asleep in the garden, he was still one of the ones that Jesus took to the garden. He saw the miracles. He did the miracles. He did the miracles. Now he's faced with a reality. The cock crowed. Jesus looked him in the eye. And the Bible says he ran away and he wept bitterly. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. God, what have I done? No! If time was able to wind back, you'd have winded it back. No! But you can't take time back. You can't take those things back. Because time keeps on ticking. And your life keeps on moving. So what do you do? Where's Peter? He's weeping bitterly. How could I have done it? I knew all the rest of them. Come on now. I knew all the rest of them would walk. But not me. But it was him. Just like it might have been you. Jesus had already told him that he was forgiven him, didn't he? I'm praying for you when you get up. But the hardest part of this is, will you forgive yourself? Will you allow yourself to start moving ahead instead of always being held back? Peter had a choice, just like every one of us in this room have a choice. Will I get up? Will I get up? Will I curl up in my little ball and sulk? Sulking does nothing. Say amen. amen. Paul made a very powerful statement. I'm almost done. Paul made a very powerful statement in the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14 declare this. Brethren, I do not count myself as having apprehended. But this one thing that I do, shout this one thing. 